Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode. I really appreciate it. And I'm just so honored to have my guest, Holly, with me today. Um, just a little bit about Holly. Uh, in 2021, she, she was just kind of going this second journey for herself um, by opening Serendipity, which is a wine touring company. And I'll let Holly kind of take us away. I'm only 19, so my knowledge on wine and touring is not as great as hers. So, Holly, thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm, I'm sure you get this all the time because you've been doing this for a couple of years, but I'm so very impressed with you. Oh, and you. Um, like you're so calm leading this this interview and and you know, how to do all the technology things and all of that and how to make people feel welcome that you just met. And that's a gift. And I give you kudos for that. Um, and I think just the idea of what you're doing, you know, to to um, get to know people and ask them such a, a deep question um, that you do as you lead into this, you know, what would you say to your younger self? But I'll start with your, your first um initial thing about opening serendipity in 2021. So yes, that's, that's true. Um, and it was, it is like a second journey for me because I've always, my background's been administrative, um, and not entrepreneurial at all. I was, I was not, you know, raised with that or didn't have that frame of reference. Um, and so that was something that came to me much later in life. And, I felt like really blessed when it did come around to have the support that I needed to kind of make a shift and, and to go a totally different direction. Um, and also the, the support, the membership, the edge, the, the mentorship and the education around it, that it takes to do that. Cause I just, you don't know what you don't know. And, um, it was so new to me and I never would have thought I'd be doing this at this stage of, of my life. So, um, if anyone is thinking of, exploring something I guess I would love to to encourage that I mean when you're when you're 17 it's all it's all brand new and, and the world's just open and there's so many choices even that can be overwhelming in its own way I guess yeah. um but I think maybe I'd, I'd love people to take away the the idea that whether you're 17 whether you're in your 20s whether you're just you know starting a family or, or you're later on in life it's just never really ever too late to um explore and and to to kind of see hey can this be a fit for me or or what does my life look like doing this as my occupation you know it just takes a little bit of courage and support but you can do it yeah I I love that message and I'm so glad that you were able to not only come up with the idea for serendipity but to really act on that like you said that when you know when I'm 17 right um when I'm 17 other 17 year olds you know kids my age we've talked about like when it comes to our future it seems so scary because what we're kind of all conditioned to think is that we make one decision and then we have to stick to it until we retire which (laughs) as we are all growing into this new age of like so many new things are emerging that it's just proven to be less and less true and that you don't have to be stuck to something until you die right right uh your interests can change your mind can change you can shift from something more administrative to something entrepreneurial and you can make it successful as long as you have that sense of like okay I'm ready to do what what I need to do I have what it takes and I'm willing to go through the really uncomfortable part of trying something new as long as you have those I feel like you can really accomplish really anything in life I agree such wisdom right there (laughs) (laughs) yeah well I would love for you to talk a little bit more about serendipity like how did this idea kind of come to you and what have you really enjoyed about switching from administrative to something more entrepreneurial yeah so I would love to tell that story so um administrative was something that I fell into and um you know, it was modeled to me, my, my mom did it. And I just kind of always thought this is what I'm going to do. I'm just, I'm going to do it. And I don't regret any of that time there because, um, I learned. So I, I learned a lot. You need to, to get mastery in whatever it is that you do. So of course I'm, I'm learning so much while I'm doing the administrative things and, um, it, it serves you well, you know, those, those skill sets still serve me in what I'm doing now. Um, 
And it also helped me as I was raising my, my family, you know, the, these were things that I, opportunity, that was what was there for me. I will, I will be real and honest. I, I did not have a college degree. And so, um, it's kind of funny because where I ended up in the administrative um, side of things, I was working at a college and I would have had to have a degree now to get that job that I, that I kind of moved into. Um, but also being working in, in um, an education type of environment, I started to have an open, develop an open mindset myself about learning and about um, like, it just wasn't something that was, that I was raised with. That's another thing I guess I want to give people um, some encouragement to as well is, you know, we don't always have everything we need in our family of origin for what we're going to maybe become, but having kind of an open mindset and to, to search um, is, is something that we do have access to, right? So many things like on internet or books or, you know, you can have mentors that are not even physically mentoring you, but that are just here. And, and I think that that's really, that's really, really cool. I didn't know that too much later in my life, but um, it, it started a, a journey when I was working at um, that particular um, higher education administrative role. And um, I took a couple of classes just for fun, um, things that interested me. I think that's really important too, for you to kind of discover that and, and learn that. Um, and then I think also doing something new and being in that open mindset. So Oregon, I don't know how much you know about where I live, but I do live in the Willamette Valley in Oregon, and it is known for um, for wine and for um, their amazing award-winning Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Well, um, we've lived here in Yamhill for well, we've, we've lived in Oregon for 20 years. We've lived here in Yamhill about 13, 14 years. And um, we weren't really into wine. We didn't even realize where we were right in the middle of all of this. So it's really interesting to me and serendipitous how it all kind of dovetailed into me being in this field. So I was I was working at the higher education place and and my husband separately, he has this this um, fantasy football league and we have people that come in from all over. And um, in the process of that, the people that were coming in from like Texas and California said, hey, you guys live right in the middle of wine country. We should come a day early and do a wine tour. Um, and Sean, my husband and I had never been on a wine tour. We had never been wine tasting. This was um, seven and a half years ago now. And um, so the day came and we we did this because of guests that were coming in. And I honestly, I fell in love. Um, and it was, it was just like these beautiful places, like the Willamette Valley is gorgeous anyway, with, with just all the, the hills and the greenery and the, the vineyards everywhere and the farm and the agriculture and, um, and wineries actually really take advantage of, of where they are and they create spaces that are even extra beautiful to showcase all of this, you know? So there's that. And then there's the fact that you have all this time together to have these, you know, intentional conversations and really connect, which is also something that's not easy to do sometimes in this, in this, you have to be intentional about it. Um, so I loved that. I loved someone just pouring wine in my glass and telling me about it. And I was just like, oh, this is just beautiful. I love it. And I, it was during that time where I had that open mindset of what's next for me. You know, my kids are older, they need me in a different way. So what, what could I do? Um, and it is scary to go from something that you feel like you might have mastery at, um, taking classes, you've gotten good at it, you've kind of, you know, have a flow to something that is brand new. And um, I like, I'm sure everybody does, I like to be good at what I do. And it's just like, um, I'm not good at this, not yet. So I need to learn about it. So I started like very part time in um, tasting rooms, learning about wine while I still had my other job that, you know, pay, paid the bills. And um, so I uh, just started really learning about it. And then I, it, it became, it's like a slow shift, but it came to where I was able to um, get connected. Oh, my, my administrative background also helped me in the wineries, which is very seasonal, seasonal industry, which I didn't realize, but um, having that administrative background helped me keep a job all year round as I made that shift. 
um, so that during the slower months for tourism, I was able to work in the, the office side of things, you know, and, and have that administrative there. That was also where I connected with wine tour guides because they would call in to, to talk or make res reservations and um, was invited through building rapport to um, drive for this company. And then I was invited to drive for another company for a couple of years. And then I started really thinking about my own business in it. And, and yeah, so, well, 2020 happened, we know, like for everyone. And it's it affected so many different industries. And um, it also affected my husband's job. And I was taking, I don't know if you've heard of Marie Forleo or not, but I was taking her B school. And um, then... 2020 happened and my husband ended up losing his job. So I had to stop taking school for a while. And then he ended up, thankfully, he got getting another job. And, and then I was able to re-up my schooling. And my husband was telling me, because I was fleshing out a couple different ideas, either health coaching or um, wine tour guide. And he said, you know that you love driving for this other company. I really think that you should do this. So that's support right there, you know? And I called to, to re-up my um, a B school, you have to, you know, pay for access to all the modules. And I, I called and said, okay, I can do this now because my husband ended up getting a job again. And they said, oh, well, our once a year thing starts on Monday. And I, and I said, Monday, I'm like, I didn't know that that's serendipitous. And that's where the name serendipity wine cures came from. So that's kind of how that all started. And then I opened up serendipity in 2021 with the support also of going through this live B school, because I didn't, I didn't have any experience in entrepreneur, yeah. you know, so I knew I loved this service, but I didn't know how to open a business. So that really helped. Yeah, that is, that's a great story. And I'm glad that you were able to, like the timings just kept working out, even when it was getting hard, that even when you got back on track, um, it was able to work out like that. And I think that is, it's so fun when you kind of get some reassurance from the universe. It's like, you're making this big shift in your life, but you're still getting that like, okay, it seems like it, it'll it'll work out, even though it's a little bit hard right now. So that's so mm -hmm. amazing. Um, <laughs> so kind of going through your journey and the different things that you have experienced with, you know, your first journey and then now your second journey, is there anything that you'd like to say before I wrap up um, to any 17-year-olds out there, um, either kind of the 17-year-olds of the future or maybe something you'd love to say to kind of your 17-year-olds in the past? I will say I love that age group. Um, when I worked at the the college, and I did miss that was mentoring um, some of the work study students and everything. And I just was so inspired, and I still am. I'm inspired by you um, right now. And I I think the it's a little bit different answer what I would say to myself when I was 17 versus what I would want to say to other people. Maybe it's not different because. Okay, I will tell you that I wasn't sure exactly how this would go today. And so I started taking all these notes of what I would say to myself. And I'm like, I just haven't thought about that. Like, what would I say to my younger self? And it came out in like sentences, like just little snippets that I would say to myself. But then I thought, does she mean my six-year-old self, my 17-year-old self, or myself five years ago? And then I started talking to myself like that. And that was interesting. That was just an interesting like exercise. Like, what, what would I say to myself when I'm six? You know, what would yeah. I say to myself? And, and the common thread though, and maybe that's what I can share. And this is going to be a little bit deep, but don't worry, it won't be like crazy. Um, it, because it's not really entrepreneurial, sure. not entrepreneurial or anything like that. Yeah, but what I funny. needed to hear yeah. when I really spent time sitting with it and thinking about it was that, I'm worth loving and that I am loved. And that connected to my whole, like, there's nothing that you have to do to prove anything. You're already loved. You're already chosen. You know, you don't have to keep looking for what's already yours because I think, I think if I would have really known that when I was your age, um, it just would have eased so much, you know, because it, I don't ha I didn't have to know then that I would end up with a family and, and I would end up someday owning my own business. That's not even the most important thing. What I, what I needed to know and what I still need to know at 53 
I still need to know I'm, I'm worthy. Sometimes we just need to hear that you're worthy of love. You are loved. Um, and that's, that's just something that I kept coming back to. Um, there's a lot of other little things on there, but that was like the main, the main thread of what, and I would love to to say that to, to all of you, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I love that message. I think, you know, it, it's, it's always something people need to be reminded of. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's so hard to admit that to yourself. I feel like that's one of the, like, the hardest things, weirdly enough, to, to admit to yourself that you need to hear and you need to feel. But it's, mm -hmm. it's so powerful because it really, those things kind of dictate your life, you know? You feel like, oh, no one, like, no one wants to hear what I have to say. No one thinks that I have anything worthy to say, right? And then you just feel so scared to ever speak. Mm -hmm. Or like, it's just like those small things that's like, you don't realize how much that like one sentence can impact your life. So I'm really glad that you brought that up. That's really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Holly, so much for the time today. I so appreciate it. And I think this is such an amazing conversation, learning a little bit about you and learning a lot about those shifts in our lives that are becoming, I think, more frequent and that having that open mind to be open to them and receptive to these things that sometimes the universe kind of keeps nudging in our way, like, hey, you like mm -hmm. this, you will be good at it. You just have to put some faith into you and into the process. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for the time today. I appreciate it so much. And thank you. <laughs>